I never caused drama in public places. I yes. never caused drama in church, yeah. you know. But that day I stood up while the prophet was there. His assistant was there. Mm. Justice Hala was there. Yeah. I stood up and I went to him and said, told him. And so I went in front and told them, I said, you need to repent. You did that? Yeah, in church. Welcome to Podcast with Magnioni. Today is a special edition. We we always talk to artists most of the times, and people think uh, this is a talk show for artists. We are not. We are a podcast. We have so many views about different people, but we also share our thoughts about different things. And today, I'm so excited. Why am I excited? Because I'm going to talk about theology and so forth. Because, yeah, I did theology apparently somewhere. So I have a, a few interests in the in the church theology and stuff that happens around the, uh, the 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 spirituality of people. So yeah, today I have a special guest. Welcome, Protasio, right? Protasio. Are you an angel, uh, oh, angel Protasio? Oh, it's it's. I think. Um, uh, the other name is David, which oh, has okay. a similar meaning. It means chosen one or beloved. Yeah. So, but then, well, there are so many Davids. Yeah. I would rather be Protasio. Yeah, because Protasio is special, man. Like, I saw it uh, and didn't kind of vote. That's why I had saved you in my number. <laughs> <laughs> I'd write that. So I met him a while ago, right? Uh, when I had a platform called Spirituals, we were putting music. Uh, for Christians in Malawi. Mm -hmm. I've been in this space doing a couple of stuff. So that time um, he was, um, he, he, has, he has been a writer uh, for a long time. So he, he was writing for, 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 for the platform, sharing his insights. So we met, and because his name was difficult to save, <laughs> I just said him, writer. I like <laughs> yeah, but welcome, man. Uh, you. you know, you, you're based uh, now, uh, because I, I thought you were, you were, you were based in really long. Yeah. Um, but you're based, I think, everywhere now, eh? No, Lilonga and Blanta. Lilonga and Blanta. Yeah. So you navigate through these ones. Yeah. Yeah. But I think, let's talk about your story, man. Um, if you go on Facebook right now and you try to <laughs> <laughs> search his name, you're going to find him everywhere. I say, I even asked my wife, because my wife was asking, like, hey, yes, this person, he comes with interesting content. Oh. Young Billy. Okay. Like, I said, well, how does this guy write? Okay, watch that hurts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I said, how? Uh, yeah, d d tell me about your writing st uh, story, man. Because I said you write a lot with good English and with good English and it's fast. Oh well. Um, yeah. oh. What's the story about, about about around this writing thing? There was a time that I was struggling a lot with um, suicide thoughts mm. uh, after everything that I went through. Um, I didn't have any person that I would talk to mm. or that would care to listen. Yeah. So the only way um, to handle the pain yeah. is what well, I started writing my story, stuff that was happening to me, mm. stuff that I experienced. So after I started writing and then I would um, send to people, a few yeah. people, the stuff that I've written that day and say, okay, well, can you check this? And then they'll be like, ah, well, you have inspired me. Oh, can you start, mm. can you, can, can you also write about this? So mm. I, I, and then I'll, they'll come up with a topic and then I'll think about it mm. and write something out of it. And then people start to say, oh, well, okay. Can you also talk about this? And then, yeah, it became a norm now. It's something that I'm used to. Wow. Man, yeah, you're a good writer, say. Let me, let me say it here. You're a good writer. You should, yeah, you should feel it. Come on. I don't know self and I was a young girl. But yeah, you're a good writer. But, but then, but I was on her and I was I thought I was only helping, you know, like. Yeah. I've seen that. I've seen it, that. It happens a lot. And, and yeah. then there are also people that think when you have written something, I say Facebook. Mm. Status. Mm. There are people that think you're you're attacking them. So you're attacking are, them. Yeah, they Malawi are. is quite a small place, and when everything you can say will build into something else. Something else. Mm. So you, well, like they say, the dog that backs most is the one that is. Hit. For me, I call you uh, the Facebook therapist. 
Because oh. if there's an issue, come on, I say, do you know what you oh. write? If you can compile all your comments, mm-hmm. you can have you can you can have your own face my Facebook uh, journey. <laughs> But then um, I, I look at it as one way of also um, helping myself to heal from certain things that I went yeah, through. Yeah. Because when someone says, okay, they share a problem, like, okay, mm. how can we solve this problem? Yeah. And then I sit down and ask myself, okay, if I was going through this situation, yeah. what how would I, I s- mm. say to myself? Or how would I handle the situation? Mm, mm, mm. So, and then you share your thoughts and then people be like, oh, well, are you a therapist? Are you this? Are you that? I'm like... Okay, I'm only trying to, you yeah. know, relate with a person and see how mm. best can I handle the situation mm. and then share my my thoughts. You have never thought of doing um, a therapy sessions with people? I do therapy sessions with people. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah, I'm, wow. I'm, a, I'm a cancer and that's what I mostly do. Ah, okay. uh, but for now, mm. I used to do it a lot with and um, Hakunjawa and mm. my office, which I know. Now I do with street connected children. Yeah. Because I realize everybody wants to help people with money, but what about those that don't, have, don't have money, money. Mm. that are struggling with different mental issues? Yeah. So now most of my work, I deal with street connected children. And let's talk about that, man. I told you of, of, um, of, of the record um, that, I think your cause is good mm-hmm. because I know the ministry will always go regarding Ghana, Jawadusa, and then Jabilaso. Most sometimes you, when you remove in a way, Anyuani, right? And in Blanta right now, there are stories that if you don't lock your car, if you're driving, I would say, they can even happen, beat yeah. you up and stuff. There is a need to intervene in this area. I think people would. Sometimes I feel like even in the robbery that is happening, most of them are coming from there yeah. because they're neglected, neglected mm-hmm. rather, and you, people don't want to have a conversation about that. So how did you come about, think, to say I would, I would venture into this? Like I said, everything that I do in my life, it's something that I've gone through at some mm. point. Um, after we lost our dad and then uh, yeah. we lost our mother, yeah. um, we were living with my grandmother. We were the three of us. Yeah. And then after some time, um, well, my mother's brother was abusive. Oh. Was an abusive man. He could beat us for no reason. I was about to eat with me. I just put a two minutes in the bag. I got a flash. You said just a terrible and then fire. So that pushed us to um, go into the streets because mm. we we're like, okay, yes, we have shelter, but. Yeah. The but there's stuff, no love here. You know, there is no love here. So yeah. we, we would go into the streets, and then we met also people that were. Yeah gurus in the streets you know like <laughs> yeah. that we're used to that life and yeah. then well little by slow i mean little by little we, mm. we we joined them we became part of the gang and then we started mm. doing weird stuff here and all yeah and then most of them today i hear um someone's having life sentences wow um I, I say it is god's grace that saved some of us to be where we are today mm. we have broken into people's homes before Wow. We have stabbed people before. Not what? we. Let me say I have broken into people's homes before. What? I have stabbed people before. You see, uh, I have stolen from people before. I would find a man sleeping somewhere there. And then, you know, like I told you, I said, 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 And then they won't even, the time they are waking up, you're, you're gone. You're, you're far gone. gone mm. Right. So after I got saved from that life, I remember uh, there was also a time where I was working as a houseboy. I was somewhere around eight. Um, what? Yeah. Come on. I see. Your story is crazy. So mm. my boss asked me a question to say, what do you want to do when you grow up? And mm. I say, you know, I want to help a lot of people. Yeah. So I was like, it can never happen. You know, I was like, I can't do this. Mm. You know, that time, but then life was hard because, mm. um, before I started staying with that guy, I was staying mm. with my uncle. Yeah. And then for school, I would move from state house to Chibasula on foot every day, like walk every what? day, going to school. I you know, Oh my God, you, you get tired, you know, yeah. with that life and you're like, better the streets, you know, the better stuff that the streets, yeah. the streets. So after that, everything that I went through, to me, I, I took that as a school, school of life. Mm. So whatever that I've gone through, let me help other people that they should never find themselves mm. in such situations. Now for kids that are in streets, I always say most people talk about street kids, but they don't give them a chance to speak about themselves. You know? That's the thing. 
we we call them That's thugs we call them this we call them that mm. but if you talk with them you find out that they are friendly people mm. you know that they just need love they just need someone to listen to them they mm. just need somebody to fight for them and using my experience i say okay i'm going to reach out to these people and make sure that um they shouldn't spend all their lives in streets that one day they can also be doing the stuff that i do so it's not only street kids that I deal with I also deal with um prisoners I also go around prisons and then mm. reach out to people in prison because I was like okay if my friends had uh, someone to speak for them if my yeah. friends had someone to be there for them they couldn't have ended up in prison yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so how do I save now the ones that are in prison how mm. do I make sure that when they get out they 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 are normal people they yeah. don't get involved in the same stuff that they used to do so I say yeah. okay Let me also start reaching out to them. Mm. People that would not pay you anything for yeah, helping them, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, that was that's that's been my journey. Oh, yes, it's a crazy one. I say I, I don't know I say I've struggled in my life. But I, not to a point that I was in the streets. I know I've done awkward stuff in yeah. my early years uh of being alive, but yeah, that was crazy, man. <laughs> that was really crazy. So, how did you move up? Uh, from there um you, you did school somewhere um and then yeah i uh um okay so this is the funny thing that was happening yeah um someone would pick us up yeah. and then so okay i'm going to be staying with you guys mm. after some time um either they will you you know you you find an abusive person in the house yeah or that person will pass on I... So Christ. after our dad passed we were staying with our mother and mm. our grandmother then our mother passed then we were staying with our grandmother then our grandmother passed. Yeah. So it was year after year something weird was happening, yeah. you know. And then there was a time where they just said okay ana atendi ngwa gawa mimi na tuone zile you know. That ana ana gawa. Ana mm. gawa in I stayed with my uncle and his wife. Mm. Well, the same abusive life yeah. continued mm. you know like he would beat you for no reason if i say i miss my brother he would beat me up and i'd say okay let me just go back to the streets to the streets yeah right? i remember there was a day where um he would she would the, the wife would send me in the morning to go find i mean fetch for firewood and stuff like mm. that and then there was a day where a guard caught me and then went to his boss and said okay i found this guy stealing and i was like no i stopped stealing you know <laughs> i no longer do that and then he had to beat me up like oh hey. wow I thought my auntie had been beaten up and then wow ha to hide was good news. Okay. So I don't know if I was wanted where in the, I was within staying. the eh, you, you don't know, feel you don't feel that love you that don't I feel do, wanted. Do I belong do here? Do I belong here or not? Mm. So and then well she decided also and um, I don't know how to put it. I mean I would say enough. She wanted transport. Mm. to to because her husband was in was in Lilongwe and mm. then we were staying in Mzuzu so she wanted transport um as a way of getting her transport mm. she didn't wait for her husband to send her transport she had to um go to to somebody's house and then uh, got alone and said mm. okay I'm going to leave the house in your hands so I'll give you when the dad give you the money then I'll mm. get the house yeah. this was not even a house it was my grandmother's house so hey. when I got back from wherever she sent me um I found out that well she's gone and I was all alone so I went back into the streets like I was used to that life. Yeah. I went back into the streets that's when I met this um woman that was like hey nzukulwanya kaluwa iwe so my grandmother was kaluwa. Yeah. And then um I was like yeah so what are you doing so I explained and then she took me to her house and yeah. then after that um that's when she sent me to Lilongwe I started now living with my grandmother my other grandmother. Yeah. That's how I got out of that life. Wow, crazy man. So you 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 got here uh you continued with school? I continued with school. Yeah. Now um went to box 2 after that. I applied for college. Of course that college was hard. That that life was too hard. Yeah. One person would come and say, "Oh, can you go to the?" And then <laughs> it, it was even it was even big people, you know? Like they are big people. Um maybe at some point we'll talk about it. Yeah, we'll talk about I've, it. I've seen them going around telling people to apply for their scholarships. I yes. know. They were yeah. telling me, okay, um, you know, um, I applied. Yeah. I mm. remember my first, uh, my first admission, I was admitted at Annie Huey Medical College yeah. to study MBBS. Time came to go. He changed. They just changed. They're like, okay, can you do it next year? I'm <sighs> like, okay. I tried it again the other year. Same thing happened. I tried the local colleges. 
well, I'll get admitted, but when time comes for me to go there, yeah, they'll just change. They'll just change. You know? So I said, mm. okay, let me not waste my time. Let me just start searching for other stuff that I can do yeah. or stuff that I can learn from the internet mm. or, you know, like online courses. That's yeah. what I, I, I spend my time doing. Yeah. So, yeah. Now, coming from a background where um, I didn't have a father figure, mm. I didn't have someone that I could talk to and yeah. would listen and all. Mm. That was a day where how you might be asking, how did I meet these people to, for them to be giving me promises? I mean, to be making promises yeah. and all. That was a time where I saw the guy on TV and I'm like, okay, you're saying, okay, God has taught me this. And then you would speak into people. Yeah. And then I'm like, I want to be like this guy. Yeah. You know? You get the inspiration. You get the inspiration. I want to be like this guy. Yeah. So uh, I asked around to say, okay, where do these guys meet? And then they said, oh, well, he's holding a crusade at Masinta. And I said, mm. okay, sure. I think I, I have to go there on Sunday. Mm. So I went there on Sunday. And then to me that time it was, okay, this is speed. This is God's grace. Because I got connected to them so fast. Yeah. You know? That they were telling me, but at the end of the day, they would change. They wouldn't do it. But they yeah, we'll, doing we'll, it. we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Um, I'm also interested with your story because there's so many exciting things. So I want to highlight one thing that happened. Mm -hmm. There's a guy in in, um, in Liwonde, my home, my hometown, yeah. my mom, mm -hmm. who did this other speech in English. Lawrence. Lawrence. Yes. I, I didn't Lawrence Wellem. Yes. yes. And you guys went there to support the person. Yeah. So when I saw that, when I saw that, I felt like, because I was not in that school where that guy was, but yeah. I was in a different school. Mm -hmm. I remember there was a time that when I was 20, yeah. Yeah, school, mm -hmm. and they, they needed someone to, to give a prayer. Yeah. I saw him, I said, the only prayer that I knew was the English prayer. And I got notification on people were talking about me, yeah. people were like whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. And it, when I saw that, I was like, I think it's an accident like that. But the opportunity of social media now mm -hmm. that now brings these things to light of what is happening in those, those spots yeah. is what interested me. And you met the guy. I saw the whole man. I was like, hey, I say, I'm just going to do some more food. It's not a good place. Not, not a good place at all. Ay. You wouldn't want even to sleep there for two days, not even a day. Because you're think you looking at the kind of potential, right? Yeah. But you're looking at um, the challenges, the, coming the person that is, is first thing. And specifically for a boy child, right? Mm -hmm. boy child, you are, you're always neglected because the messaging is always the girl child. child. So you were like, okay, so where do I fit in if this happens to me? Well, yeah, after I visited, um, well, I didn't know what to expect because mm. looking from whatever that was posted on social media, on Zodiac, I was like, okay. When I saw him speaking, I mean, giving his speech, yeah. it reminded me of the younger me that had yeah. potential, potential, that was intelligent, yes. but there was no person that could say, okay, we will we'll continue supporting this kid. We'll, we'll do something about this kid. Yeah. You know, there were places that where I would go and then now Kapanga and Dagatulo, stuff like that. Mm. And then people would clap hands like, oh, you're a hero. I would mm, act. Mm, 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 and then people would be like, oh yeah, this guy is cool. This guy is cool. Mm. But then who is going to support me? It is so, there. so when I saw him, I'm like, this is the younger version of me. And mm. I don't want him to struggle like the way I struggle. Yeah. So because of whatever that I went through, I take that as a learning, as a learning point to say, okay, nobody is supposed to go through the stuff that I went through. Yeah. So I said, okay, I'm going to visit this guy. And I know there are a lot of people that are like, oh, you know, people just say that on social media, but yeah. they don't visit. So the next day I went there and then I met the school guys and then I met the parents then, yeah, we talked about it. And then, yeah, our relationship is too good. Cool, man. I'm happy that you did that because I think that guy um, would have an opportunity. The exposure that you can yeah. give him. Sometimes it's not even about the money. It's about the exposure, the hope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To say that whatever yeah. that happens, I'm going to probably get it. people who are going to yeah. look, who can hear my story. And they're like, um, you talk of uh, school fees who would uh, and then guys coming in, I've remembered. <laughs> While I go like this, when I was in college, I was yeah. struggling. I have a crazy story about struggle and school fees. And I remember going to a prophet that <laughs> in NS, my in admission, there was a, there's a guy called Prophet Favor. Yeah. Who's blood zone. Yeah, that guy. Mm. That guy <clears throat> was like, I'm a Tandisa fancy. Mm -hmm. So is it a Vuda? Could you open the master's in the lame bus and graduate? Yeah. So I went to the guy, I say, the guy, Uma and I, 
But you remember that time, even Guru Gumai Nayo, because he had a story yeah. about Sedomi, right? Mm-hmm. He, he yeah. slept with a guy, mm-hmm. and everyone was afraid of, of going to his room. I told the guy, no, I was like, I said, hey, I'm struggling. I said, I've heard, could you help people? I just need help. I said, I'm listening to the government. Graduate. Mm-hmm. The guy's like, find me to my room, in my room. <laughs> 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 Don't I you made in the room? I, I, okay, but I was I had tried winner, I tried winner. So I was like, hey, I said, when I go for Hadiwa Daja and mm-hmm. and and just hear the story. But I went there, I found another guy, a friend, um, a guy that was also a student there. Nice other maga maga gaba mafuto aki, right? Uh, when I went, yana joga bo encha niki na kubasa na bogam baza ki aram bogam ba. You know, I know people kuta bo even kulu muanga amaupa because of whatever. I was like, I, I hear the stories, man. But for me, let me tell you my story. <laughs> I need money. You, it was like, okay, fine. So yeah, I can help you. I've helped. They, you know these people, these mm-hmm. prophets. Instead of just helping you, they were telling you a story, stories of how they have helped other people. You know, like put, thousands, I've helped thousands, I've helped so and so on and so on. And I was so there listening. So and I helped some people. I think that they represent this one. Can I go, ah, but um, I'm not going to help you uh, now uh, because I need to know what am I getting out of this. Like, ah, is the guy talking about said of me? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, I'm not going to do this. But I, so my sister then was like, as Niniji manga. So if anyone who is willing to buy, I told Guraji manga, and then, and then we, they can pay, they can give them money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was like, Niniji manga. Oh, Niniji manga. Okay, fine. And then Gura. Because I have people that I help in different places. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm going to give them the names, yeah. Ah, the guy. Zé, 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 stop answering my, my calls via Gulum Gosta and Peza. I, 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 I think most of them behave that way. I mean, like, why are you even. I, I still don't get it to you today. Because, okay, when people ask me to say, okay, um, they said describe your story in three three words, I would say, you know, it's a story of pain, yeah. perseverance, yeah. forgiveness. Yeah, sometimes you move on, but when you see the them on stuff TV. That yeah. I've heard. And gone through, mm. and then when you see those people on TV, you're like, "What is this?" You get. <laughs> I, 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 let me just share with you my story. That's like that was yeah. the time where I say, "Okay, the same guys." Mm. Um, well, it's a famous family in Malawi, anyway. Mm. The Bushidis. Yeah. Uh, I, I remember that time. It started. It first started in, in MCB building. He called me in Flint, and then he gave me a prophecy. They quoted a prophecy, anyway. Yeah, they quoted he, a gave prophecy. Me, he gave me a prophecy, <laughs> and then they told me, he was like, you know, you're a brilliant kid. We are going to send you to China. Mm. God wants you to go to China. You're going wow. to study in China, stuff like that. Wow. I got excited, you know, okay. coming from it's happening. whatever that I've... I'm like, this story will be the most inspiring story on earth, yeah. you know? Because they're coming from the streets, China. I texted his wife, you know, we'll talk that time. I texted his wife. He was like, she was like, oh, yeah, I'll talk to him. I'll talk to him. I say, okay, wow. I've applied to Catholic University. Let me just go there. Yeah. And then you say, oh, well, I will talk to him. I got blocked. What? You know, and it took me about like two years, I think, couldn't do better at the church. And then I was like, okay, maybe this time around. I met the brother. He said, okay, you do this thing again. And then I started applying again, yeah. you know, and... The thing with me was wherever I applied, the one mm. time when I see my was, you know, I applied computer science and then they also taught they sent me the email out, you know, Matengedwa. Panobo to me change and the my application fee and all when I would to go to me my documents up. Yeah. I taught them. And then they're like the brother was like, you know, um Ubi and Ramas and Zabu is up on my petal. Does it be like I those back? What do you that's all this? No, no, Mishek. Mishek, okay. So I started um you know, I borrowed money. I I paid for. I remember it was about three hundred and fifty dollars. No, three hundred and eighty dollars. Something like that. Time in a job was a dollar ita vuta. Because you go to bank, you saw go to bank apply. You know, I did that, and then well, it was about three four hundred something the mm. total cost of just the application fee. Yeah, and then. I told them, I saw okay, my application form, I got a few guys and say, well, he called me the same story, you know, what, well, how much is the total? Total, give me a total. You know, total. <laughs> and I'm like, Zakazo says that, you know, the three, for the three years, mm. it's going to be 3.5, 3,500 US dollars. Yeah. They're like, that's not money to us. You know, I still remember, I still have those conversations. You know, that's not money to us. We'll, we'll, we'll give it to you. And that's the crazy part about the claims. I'm like, I don't need you to tell me. God, thank you. Oh you my know, gosh. and then 
the forms came in and then I got a call from DHL. I went to take my forms and then they said, okay, I, I texted him. I said, the forms are here. He's like, oh, praise God. What's next? I'm like, um, what do you call it? Visa. Yes. So, you know. And another. this is two years after the betrayal. Yes. Okay. And then he's like, okay, um, Kabanga's a visa. 2018. This 2018. Are we talking about 2018? We are talking about 2018. Crazy. Say Kabanga apply visa. I went there and I found no other seka because I'm a seka by the Chinese and by second. You know, yeah, they, yeah. They, 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 they go to there. They're like, but for you, we are going to do it for you. We don't know why, but we're going to do it for you. What? So I did that. Two days later, it came out. Like I told him, I said, the visa is here. Dude, are you talking about Ch- Chinese embassy? Yes. And then I'm like, you know, it's here. Then mm-hmm. he said, oh, what's next? And I'm like, ah, take to Zaya ticket in this and hotel. Yeah. So he said, come to my house. And then I went to his house. Mm. Um, we talked about it. I remember there were guys that still asked me today what happened. Yeah. I don't have the answer to to give them and say, this is what happened. Yeah. And then he tells me, but you know. Yeah. And in my heart, I'm like, God, yeah. God, you're this really connected with the source of you money. Know? And then I went back home excited. He told yeah. me, okay, text me on Monday. We're going to sort you your money issues by Monday. And then I went home excited. I started telling, people, telling people, you know, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. You know? leaving. And then he's like, yeah, you're going to leave on Friday. You okay. know, so I'll make sure that I should send you the money before Friday. Yeah. Monday, I visited him again. We he said, okay, can I get this in Kwaja? And then we made those calculations. Yeah. And then it's like, ah, okay, Wednesday, we'll sort this out. I'll send someone on Wednesday since I'm going out. Mm. And I'm like, yeah, God, this is it. You know. Eesh, cool, but do you know the hope I said that you have about the You know, you, I, uh, I went home, started giving out stuff. I took all my clothes, I gave to please and I said, okay, God has blessed me, <laughs> you know. God has blessed me. There is no need for me to be keeping these things. I need to give, you know, oh my a gosh. seed to God, you know, for whatever. Oh my that. So I gave away my stuff. And then I, 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 where's they came, I texted him and say, okay, I'm gonna, he didn't answer Thursday. I texted him and say, okay, let me talk to Dan. I've forgotten his name, not Duncan. That was a guy's name. I, I could have checked. But yeah. then, I forgot his name. I said, let me check with him. I'll get back to you. Mm. And then he checked. I don't know if he checked. He never go back to me. Hey. All I heard now, is that oh, the guy has stolen money from him. And I saw him, whatever the, guy, the other guy that stole money from him was mm. doing in 36. Yeah. And I'm like, how would I even tell them? They're, 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 they're already treating me in a very weird way. Yes. So Thursday, and then he texted me and says, I take it to Kazmaez, I take it to So mm. I went, and we, we, we had a guy, I had a guy I was calling Big Brother. I went to him and said, mm. okay, dude. Um, my father says I had to get right, and then I also confirmed in that house school. Now, I'm traveling on Friday, I'll be there by Sunday, yeah. You know, funny enough, Thursday, yeah, my messages weren't going to what I had given away everything. Eesh. When I say everything, you know, you're starting off on Friday, you can't be keeping stuff, you can't be house. keeping, yeah, yeah, you need to clear I everything. I've given away everything, and then Thursday, he's not picking up. Friday, he's not picking up. The guy started calling me and saying, you know. And I'm telling this professor, I'd say, my professor, I, I, I know you have been giving a lot of excuses, but just give me a few more days you know, to sort this thing out. And then Saturday came, long story short, Saturday came, still not answering. So on Sunday, I walked on foot from Area 36, St. John's to yeah. Area 47. Church. Where not not church, yeah. his house, somewhere yeah. close to ABC. Yes, yes. I walked on foot. And then sadly the gate man, get, get the gatekeeper told yeah. me and said, okay, uh my and down to the roll my meeting. So I texted him on another number that I got from another person and say, Dad, Chabu no one thousand kwacha. You know how we respect them as yes, fathers. Yes. And then Chabu no one thousand kwacha. And then he says, Sorry, I'm busy, I'm in a meeting. Mm. And then it started raining, I remember. Started yeah. raining. I'm like, Dad, Vula, can you just send me 1,000? We sell transport and the other one I'll use it for food. Yes. Because I haven't been eating. You know, I gave away all my stuff and I had to sell some stuff to pay uh, for the... For a few things, the loans that you were taking. That, yeah, yeah. You know, and then he says, don't worry, my dear, God will provide. Trust me. Oh my God. <laughs> That's crazy. See, I looked as if I was the greatest fool on earth that day. 
How oh have God. I allowed them to betray me again and again and again and again? And I'm still trusting them. You know, e- I went back home, walked on foot, went home. And then the next day he sent a text that said, you should come tomorrow, man. I mm. mean, Mazuaka, he said, you should come tomorrow. I went there the next day. Mm. He didn't say anything serious. He just took the driver and said, you come see if I'm down. There are funny stories mm-hmm. about the Bushiris on, on how they treat people mm-hmm. and how they have, um, because your story is a story that you can say here, but there are so many people that have been betrayed in terms of trust. And they- I, I know this is my first time to say it. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, okay. I, I had an interview with Transworld Radio. They asked yeah. me certain questions and I'm like, I can't keep on running out from these questions forever. Yes, you can't, you can't. I need to tell people what happened. <laughs> Because it's the truth, you have your emails, you have stuff. And, you know. and, and when I hear them now, uh, they're doing their scholarships, mm-hmm. uh, they're doing all this help, uh, the, the help that they do to people. For mm-hmm. me, I've always argued they're pure kind of people. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I know people are going to jump on me because every time you speak about this, uh, people jump on you. But mm-hmm. there are so many stories I've heard off air of people that have come out that have come out to, to, to share to say that in a when I was promised A, B, C, D. A lot. A lot, a lot, I, a I lot was lot never of given people, anything. A lot of people are hurting. You know, when I saw that. People are that, hurt out there, man. When I saw him the scholarship it. thing, I was like, okay, maybe this time around. Maybe because he's here. Maybe because that time he was busy traveling. Yeah. Maybe because he's here, we'll see change. Yeah. But then I've started getting now people approaching me to say, okay, what happened to the scholarship? Maybe mm. you can tell us. Maybe. And I'm like, look, I've been through this. Yeah. I almost committed suicide, you know. I said, that was crazy because, because how would you I move from there? Nothing. Even my landlady, I told them, I said, okay, look, I'm I'm going out I'm for leaving. three years. Yeah. You know, so, my neighbors, I told them, I said, I'm leaving for three years, e- you know, and then starting life again. Uh, that was a time I still have messages that I would tell them and say, okay, mm. even 1,000, even 1.5, I need to buy a packet of sugar and something to keep me going. Even my brother, he, I know he watched this, the brother yeah. that I was talking about, yeah. that, uh, Zamaya ticket. Yeah. He was the one that was now helping me out with a little that he was getting. He but you sent them a message. Guys, all I need is it was 1K. And this the, is all that what's, I what's need. No. I don't... So uh, if, if when people talk about their experiences, most of the times people just rush to say, no, you know, whatever that we see on social media, I mean, yeah. we see them giving, we see them doing this, yeah. whatever that you're saying is not true. Yeah. I, I'm not speaking out of hurt because I know this thing. I mean, they, they, they'll, they'll watch you, this. Thing, you have you interacted know. with them, right? And I've been there. I've slept at their house before. I've, I've talked with them. I've had their phone numbers, you know. And wow. to me, I just said, I think... This whole God thing does not work. I remember last year, yeah. I got to a point where I felt like, okay, maybe let me try Islam. Okay, there are Before a lot you, of people that are going to watch this yeah. and people wouldn't expect me to be in that position, but yeah. I've been through that yeah. to say, okay, these things are not working. You know, I've seen the lies, I've seen the whatever that the stories people create just to fool people on social media. And I'm like, these things are not working. Let yeah. me try Islam. And then the guy that I started talking to, he, he, his name is Ahmed. He's from Egypt. Yeah. He was good. He was teaching me, you know, good stuff. And I'm like, no, but I then I think I'll do this out of bitterness. Out know? of bitterness. I, I you, need, you're going to leave Christianity out of bitterness. Out of bitterness. Mm. I need to heal first. Then I can mm. make the right decision. And so yeah. this is the right decision. And then taking back to our stories that have been happening recently when I say, okay, let me leave Cause I was still going there, you know, I was still oh, going you were there. Oh, you were still congregating with them? Yeah, but then it came and a point. And they would see you? Yeah, they would see me, but then it came a point where I think I just got frustrated with whatever that was happening. I remember that day uh, there was an issue that happened and then it was all over the social media about yeah. um, the, the the prophet, I mean, like I say prophet Hala and mm. whatever that happened. So I remember going to church. I, I sent a text to um, the leaders and say, you know what? I think I've seen so many things happening in this church. Yeah. And uh, you know what I've gone through? I think this is my time to leave this church. Yeah. And then he told me like, no, you can't leave. Why? You know? So I went there the next day and say, okay, why you do you, don't you want me to leave? Yeah. You know? And then he says, um, no, because this is not a time for you to leave. But then there were a lot of things that I wasn't agreeing with. Just Aye. not just uh, the promises, but yeah. there were a lot of things like, you know, how people are taught to give money so that God should bless them. Yeah. Stuff like that. Dude, man, I, I always think that's, that's a scam, man. I, I, I don't think God, God is, is waiting for my money for me to be blessed. 
I don't think so. You did not pay any money for God to create you. To why cre- should you why pay, should I money pay money for him to bless you I with something? Know, man. I you get know? my cash and I don't do that. And the Bible says by stripes we are healed. But then you find people saying, you know, if you want to be healed, give uh, give a seed, 100,000. You know, if you want to be healed, give a seed, 1 million. Is it for what? Is it for what? Because if the healing then was he given for free. Then he died in vain. Yeah, but he died in vain. He, because he the, died in vain. Gosh, man. You know, so there were those things concerning yeah. seed issues. There were mm. the issue of fatherhood where you have to act as a... To glorify one man wherever you go. Mm. I mean, if you go somewhere and then you don't mention the name of someone, mm. it'll look as if you are you're, not following. You're rebellious you know? in a way you're, that you're you, don't, you, don't, you don't understand you know? the power that T- To me, all that was, mm, that was you awkward. Know, that, that was awkward. It was more like, okay, is this a church? You know, and I would see how when someone leaves, how they got treated, you know. I've seen uh, it. If you leave, okay, I, I, I did theology. Mm-hmm. In theology, we classify a, a, a congregation where one person becomes the head mm-hmm. and everything is centered on them. Yeah. Most like it's centered on their brand or everything. Mm-hmm. We call it a cut. People don't want to say it. People don't want to talk People about that. People don't want to say that if a church is based on one person, if you cannot stand out if one person dies today, if you cannot stand out if one person says, okay, guys, it's in this year, mm-hmm. that is a, a cut is not a church at all. I, imagine, okay, even uh, forget about me, but yeah. there are videos on social media you can just search. Pastor so and so God, I mean, like God cursed, but you will find Bishop so and so after they left, the God cursed. If somebody leaves, I remember that I saw a video that really touched me and said there was yeah. a pastor that went to the big guy and said, mm. Okay, Papa, I feel like God has told me that I should start my own ministry. Yeah. You know, you, you're respecting him as your spiritual yeah, father. Yeah, yeah. And then the answer that he, he, he gave, even mm. live, on a live, 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 live. Broadcasting. Like, yeah, live yeah. broadcast. And then he says, you know, I cursed him. What? I, I, I told him, I said, where, where, where was God all along? You know? And I'm looking at that and I'm like. I can curse someone. And who, who You're give, cursing someone for telling you that they are going to start God's work to, 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 to continue God's work somewhere. What kind of life is that? Ay, man. You, know? you, can, you can't leave your car. That's and, the thing, and, man. And then going back to my story, I remember that Sunday I went there and then I told them, I say, you know, if I'm going to be in church today, mm. something weird will happen. And mm. they say, no, you'll still be in the church. Hey. You know? So I told this guy, I said, okay, I'll be in the church. So I remember I got in church and then they started leading this thing. You know, um, stuff like that. <laughs> and for the first time, I've never been, I've never caused drama in public places. I've yes. never caused drama in church, yeah. you know. But that day I stood up while the prophet was there. His assistant was there. Mm. Justice Hala was there. Yeah. I stood up and I went to him and said, told him, and so I went in front and told them, I said, you need to repent. You did that? Yeah, in church. And, and I don't know what came over me that day. Dude, I see, that, that, was, that, that was some boldness, I see. It, it, was, it is the craziest day of my life, I should be honest with you. Because I stood up and then I went there and then this guy kept on talking. Yeah. I, I respected the man. He was a, he was a great man. So yeah. Sadly, he passed on. Yeah. He was a great, great man that I respected. But yeah. And then I'm looking at these younger ones that like, they, they can call him the uncle and oh, yeah. they're, they're using him to threaten the whole congregation, God's people. And then yeah. he comes and says, oh, you know, uh, this ABCD. And I'm like, no, don't, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. You need to repent. You went to Bushi life and you told him. No, he was not there. He was still in South Africa. It okay. was the so, Justice Hall. So Justice was. was there. So you spoke to Justice. Yes. I told him and said, you need to repent. Oh right. my God, man. That was some boldness, I say. And I then this be- guy comes, you know, they work with big guys. This guy comes and I told him, I said, God will kill you. If so you dare touch oh, me. So the, the bouncer was coming to, you know, was coming to, to you know. bring order. Now, this was a crazy part. The crazy part. I left my wallet in church. I left my house keys in church. Yeah. And then I, 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 I left. When, when I left the building, that's when I came to my sisters. I'm like, what happened? And I'm outside that place. And then I'm like, what happened? I... And then I prayed a prayer because I noticed, without, okay, I don't have my keys. I don't have my, my uh, wallet. My wallet. So what should I do? I said, God, if you're the one that made me say that. Because, okay, before that, I yeah. told them as well. I, well. One thing that I told them was, you know, if you think I'm lying, yeah, watch what will happen. Your brother will be arrested. He got arrested the next day. 
that's when you hear hear that on Monday he was caught by police was that yeah the, and then they arrested him yeah and then I got consoled I said God if you are the one that made me say that can you please send someone to pick me up and then this guy comes and says where are you going I'm like in area 36 yeah. just after I finished the prayer just mm. soon after I finished the prayer he yeah. comes and says where are you going I said in 36 I said let me drop you home so he dropped me home the other things followed later and then <sighs> I heard that uh, well people started. You know, to other people, you were a hero, mm, you know, for standing people, up for whatever nonsense yeah, that was happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To other people, you were this rebellious person. Yes. And then I heard that they gave me 30 days to leave. The church? Yeah. <laughs> so you had They say the guy, the big man, <laughs> gave me 30 days to leave. And that was a crazy part. Yeah. You know, that was a crazy part. I was like, okay. And I knew people that were clapping hands. I thought they are my friends, but then they were supporting that. You know, they started clapping hands and all. People are so broke. Just need a connection, man. The same day, I'm being told I'm going to run mad. Oh, they, were t- they told you that you're going People mad. were sending, oh, these leaders were sending me all sorts of crazy things. You know? Sending you? I got texts from South Africa. I was getting texts from Malawi. I was getting texts from Zimbabwe. I was getting texts. You know, it, it was. So it, people can do that. You know, that's torture, right? You, you know, and then they're telling me, oh, to order, you know, you, you, you're going to rot. You know, you're going to go through whatever. You know, people will stab you to you die and stuff like that. And I'm like, dude, I say, do you have those messages? I say, you, you know, the, you'd keep them in the email. God, I say. God has saved me from the street. I've been a street kid before. I've yeah. gone through worse. You cannot tell me now that you You've have been stabbed the power like a... to kill me. So when I heard <laughs> about the 30 days, I said, look, 30 days is a long time. Yeah. Give me two weeks. If you're really a prophet, yeah. give me two weeks. If I don't die in two weeks, then we'll see who is right or who is wrong. But the thing is, why should you die? You were never created by man. You were created by, in this context, so, God. So, you know, the next day, and then I got this message. I said, you're being, uh, you've been someone for disciplinary healing. I asked, who is going to discipline me? Mm. Because this issue happened. Mm. The people that were involved in the issue were the ones that were giving out commands. In an institution, if something happens, and then, and then, you know, I'm going to now, yeah. You cannot be the one chairing. You can chair that. You, I mean, you cannot be the one oh, oh, banker, giving out commands like yeah. oh, the disciplinary mm. meeting should be like this and that. You are supposed to be sat down somewhere yeah. because you're also involved in the whole stuff. Yeah. Right? So I'm like, okay, who is going to do this? And then yeah. they say, oh, well, we'll send someone who's going to, I mean, like the National um, Advisory Council, mm. they, they call it the National Advisory Council, yes. We will sit you down and then you should talk. So I said, okay, you tell them. If they are ready for me to share whatever that I know about the church, yeah, then we can continue this. So you you say okay, fine. I'm, I'm gonna come, but I'm, I'm gonna, gonna come. But I'm this gonna is share. what I'll do. I'll share the content. You know, I'll share the experiences. Uh, and then, uh, well, they're like, okay, basi, you know, you know, stuff like that. And I'm like, well, things are not supposed to be happening like this. Okay. So leaving was the hardest thing because, to be honest with you. There are a lot of people that look up to me. I, yeah. I know maybe you have said there are a lot of people that look yeah. up to me spiritual wise, mm, you know, like mm, there are mm, a lot of people. Yeah. But I got to a point where I didn't even know who I was. I was so lost. There were days I would wake up. I know most people would say these are made up stories, but mm. there are days I would wake up and then I would find blood on my shirt. Oh. Stains of blood on my shirt. There are days, there are people that are close to me, they know. There are days mm. when I'm traveling, I would feel like, the, the car is gonna over 10, mm. you know. There were days that I would wake up and see blood stains on the floor and all yeah. stuff. Weird, weird st- stuff were happening, Aye. you know. And that 30 days that I was taught, it mm. was the hardest 30 days of my life, mm. you know. And then months later, I heard there was also another tweak that was given. There was a service that was done. There was a slot that was brought and said, This slot will follow all our enemies. But I was never the enemy, <sighs> you know. So, oh my God, man. This is It was hard crazy. for me to say God. For the first time I taught myself, I said, God does not exist. Come on. And how, it's not a long time ago. It's 2020 going to now 2021. And it, how, how would you believe God in, if, I, if, if, if you, people uh, that you look up to, they turn against you, you and, and then, they speak curses of you dying? Come on. Come on. You know? Would you, you didn't go there. So when all these things were happening and I'm like... Why did I get myself involved in this? Because, you know, yeah. I lost friends, real friends that were yeah. there for me without praising them, glorifying them, mm. I know. And then I would go back to those friends. I remember there was a lady first. That lady told me, the, she was the very first lady that told me. Back then, she said she was from Poly. Mm. And then she said, you know, Protasio, you have been my friend for a very long time. Yeah. But the path that you're taking is the wrong path for you. 
Mm. You will find out one day, but you find it might be too late. Too late, yeah. But I'm glad it was not too late. Yeah. You know, so stuff like that happened. And then when I left and then I started checking these things, that's when I said, okay, the stuff that I used to hear about yeah. these people. Yeah. We were the very people that would say, no, you are lying. You know, you are sent by the devil. But now <laughs> I've experienced them firsthand. And then I'm like, so like, all do that. Do you know how crazy it is? It's do you know how crazy. crazy this story is? Because you see, I know, and, and I'll go back to the description of a cart. Uh-huh. The description of a cart is that members will, fi- will fight no matter what. They for, fight no matter for, what. For, for, for the leader. Mm-hmm. Because they see the leader as a supreme being to an extent. And it's all about the leader. And moments when you see people uh, being so strong and doing whatever they want to do Mm -hmm. and attack people, Mm -hmm. you just know this is it. So is it on social media, we're looking at a guy that the guys that have presented themselves as, you know, angels, you know, angels, investors, uh, you know, things. But behind closed doors, I'm like, why do we get treated this way? You know, because and I know there are a lot of guys that I left with. They went back because you know money, money, stuff money. like that. I told you that people are so broke, right? And most of the times, when people go to these prophets and they like, and they are so close to them, mm-hmm. they are these uh, food soldiers mm-hmm. who do some uh, weird stuff. Yeah, it's all about the money. Give these guys money; they can't go there, man. But then, once you get closer. And I always believe, I say, God will always make a way for you. If you're really crossed with God, he's yeah. going to make a way for you to leave certain places. But I've realized people do love money mm. a lot. Mm. You know, like uh, guys that would speak out, oh, you know, that is an evil card. That is this, that. They are back there now today. <laughs> They're the same guys... <laughs> They are the same guys that after watching this will come attacking us and say oh, blah blah blah. No, blah, they'll blah, jump blah, on blah, it. Blah, they'll blah. jump on it. But you the know? thing is, but truth be yeah, told, truth be told, most people follow prophets not because they are seeking God, but mm. because of money. They're seeking some status. There right? are people that I also know that also talk bad stuff about them. But when mm. they go to them, they are these best sons, you know, best this, best that. And I'm like, <sighs> but the stuff this person says about you behind closed behind doors. The closed door. You know, uh, how did you that, know? That was a time when I got hurt by with this whole school thing. I sent him the text that said, you know what? Um, there is one thing that I want to tell you. I've been loyal. Mm. I've been loyal. I lost my home. I had a fight with my relatives. Mm. You know, they had to send me out because of following them. Mm. And then I've followed you all this while, but you keep on abusing me, you know? But the people that you treasure mm. are the- using you. Once they get their car, the cars they wanted, once they get the money, the houses they wanted, they leave. You know, that's when they come out and say, oh, he's a fake prophet. He's a fake prophet. I'm like, you're still entertaining these people. Why? Hmm. You know? So after I walked out and then I made a decision to say, you know, come with me. I will never be threatened by any person. I will never be fooled by any person again. So if it means Ah. standing for the truth alone, Mm. Mm. I will stand for the truth alone. Oh man, this is super crazy, man. It's, it's crazy because you know the uh, stuff, it's, there are a lot of stuff I, we were talking that the first uh, that day. I, I we talked about let's say for example this yeah. issue of seed, mm. issue of sowing into the anointing. You will never find them in the Bible, man. How people created Romans uh, eight thirty two says, "If mm. God was willing to send His Son to die for you yeah. freely, He gave His Son as a free gift. Mm. How much more will you not give you?" All other things All that you're other looking things for. for free. And then you go to, to someone and say, you know, you know, I, I'm sowing a, a seed, you know, because I for want my to. education. I want. I'm sowing this so that I can pass. I'm sowing this there so that I can that get a promotion. Have fought with their husband. There are people that have left. I mean, they they they, they, they have divorced their husband. I mean, they've gotten divorced yeah. because of following their man of God. They mm. listen too much to their man of God than their husband. It's it's sad. It's crazy, man. And especially women, you know, the women, you always like, papa, 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 everywhere you go, you know, papa, apostle, papa, this, papa, this, mm. papa, that. And I'm like, where are we heading to as a, as, as a nation? I'm telling you, there's this thing, and I want to, 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 to point out this thing clearly. Um, every time a card um, is, 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 is operating, mm-hmm. there's always a heavy defense. Mm-hmm. And people don't know that you are brainwashed when you are there, mm-hmm. for instance, if you tell me about it, something that I treasure so highly, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, if someone comes and says, McDonald, podcast is nothing. Just leave it. Your future is no podcast. I will defend it because I like it. 
and probably I'm so affiliated to it. Mm-hmm. And that's what happens with cards. I'm telling you, people that will fight, will fight, can even say bad things, can even curse you. Now, I, I, even I, when the Bible have, says have that you can have, have the power to do that. Have that people that curse a lot, yeah. they are not in the world, they are followers of prophets. If you have ever noticed, oh, followers of prophets, they oh, curse a lot. Oh, oh, Prophets, apostles, you agree with me. Yeah. They, they, they do case a lot. Just mm-hmm. say something that disagrees with what their pastor said. I'm telling you, they, they can even attack you physically. And, and you, you go like that, that brainwash sense is heavy, you, man. You, you, you know, like you ask people yourself, can't believe. Is this the same God that we are following? No, or is no, 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 it's, it's no. It's not the God of the Bible in a way that would. Maybe it's the God of the whatever that they are following, but it's a sad thing how people <sighs> defend. Uh, People can't even defend, they fail to defend their, their, their leaders, but they would defend Papa, even if whatever that he has done is true. Yeah. They don't even know him. Whatever that he does behind closed doors, they don't know. They don't even know. But once you just say something that disagrees, it's always Papa said this. What does the Bible say? For me, it's all about the son. A prophet or any man of God, any apostle mm-hmm. who has money mm-hmm. is going to control the multitudes, and it's easy to do that. Especially poor people. Poor people who don't have money, mm. they can easily be swindled to whatever direction. True. I would. I can even tell uh, you there are examples of yeah. prophets in Malawi who who are so so vocal, but who are so controversial in their way. Mm-hmm. But because they are broke, you see their influence is limited. Mm-hmm. The moment you can produce cash, mm-hmm. yeah, you can control the entertainment sector. You can control this sector. Everything. Everything is in your hands, man. Uh, anyway, uh, let, uh, let, let's move on on this one, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's move on on this one because I want to talk more about what does, what happens in the church. Mm-hmm. Um, people talking, man. People talking. Uh, I've been in church for a long time. I got abused in the church. I, I, you know, the stories you're yeah, talking about, yeah, there are stories uh, that you mm-hmm. get everywhere. Yeah. There are stories of people promising. Mm-hmm. There are stories of people that don't care about you yeah. but want more from you. Yeah. I have those stories. Mm-hmm. Uh, but... Why is it, would you see, for now, as far yeah. as I know, yeah. if you go in countries like uh, German, you find the old people are the ones that are going to church. Mm-hmm. In most of these countries, mm-hmm. young people, there's a mass exodus of young people from the church. Yeah, There is a mass exodus. Why do you think this is a case now? When the, the, the church is now celebrated, when they are... Pr- Celebrated prophet who can see your house and who can see the details. But why are people living in their large numbers and specifically young people? Today, I feel like uh, the, the COVID pandemic yeah. you know, opened a lot of people's eyes. Mm. That the people that were following yeah. were not the people that they imagined them to be. Yeah. You know, the COVID I mean, that time, nobody was, most people were at home every Sunday, most of us were at home. Yeah. There are very few people that were gathering in churches. I mean, yeah. maybe our mother churches, but these Pentecostal churches, it was very, and there were very few people that were gathering in churches yeah. like that. And then I feel like the way the so called generals and the so called big men of God, the so called yeah. major prophet, the way they handled the, the pandemic. <laughs> the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because funny. for someone that tells you all the time, like, you know, I'm a general, I'm a major, I'm with this. And then the way they were so much afraid of COVID, yeah. you'd ask yourself questions. Is this the same man mm. that, you know? Mm. And then that's when also people, I think it opened people's eyes when it comes to, uh, when it comes to issues to do with money, because, yeah. you know, the, the people now had a chance to spend money the way they would want to spend, yeah. not just giving to some, to church, yeah, yeah. To some person were, somewhere. There and, were other priorities, you know, there uh, were competing other priorities. priorities, yeah. And then after that, I feel like also, apart from that, there was also a time, the, during that time, um, I'm not sure about the, the Presbyterian churches, but I'll focus on the churches that I know that I've been in Yeah, in these Pentecostal hyped up churches. Uh, um, and I, it, it, to me, it was crazy when I would see certain things, um, like for example, yeah. Sunday comes and then this guy is not even preaching anywhere. Everybody's at home. And then they're saying, you know, everybody should send in their seed, their tithe, <laughs> their offerings. Remember, yeah, yeah. And for the house of the Lord to have something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, there's, there's no church, but you want me to pay. What am I paying for? To, to give. But yeah, something. probably because of running costs. That Super was that, that's the other part. But then I also one thing that I've noticed that has been a major, 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 major problem is yeah. the issues of abuse in churches. Mm. Men of God asking young girls to sleep with them. Yeah, you know, 
uh, even asking they are, they are gays as well that uh, you know they put on a suit they mm. act as if they are prophets but they are gays mm. I, I've heard stories like that where mm. people are being asked to sleep with a guy mm. if even if it is not in the church in the uh, church and uh, the question is always I, 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 I'm not going to jump in that story uh, mm-hmm. because of, of, of other things but you wonder mm-hmm. right you wonder that the benchmark is the Bible mm-hmm. the Bible has this direction and you are pushing me towards this direction. And you wonder, what is happening? The moment you, you, you just sign an alarm to say, ah, 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 ah. You, you're taking us a hurter. You're taking us a rebellion. M- most people these days don't read their Bibles, especially young people. That's why yeah. they, they, they are easily convinced. You know, they, they, they're easily manipulated because you got, we have ladies that say stuff like, oh, he told me, you know, like I'll be anointed after sleeping with him. Like what sort of nonsense is because that? Because I hear about the uh, you know? the Kasongo guy who you slept know? with a woman who's getting married, and then the question is, I don't what this team what in and and I know stories, man, mm-hmm. of a man of God who was a pastor, senior pastor, mm-hmm. impregnated the place team leader. I'm like, Go, that guy I see was throwing prophecies like nobody's business. Okay, what, uh, what, what, when it comes to prophecy, the church, the when, church when, is when crazy. it comes to prophecy, people forget one thing. Yeah. Um, Prophecy, prophecy is a gift, right? Mm. It's a gift of prophecy. Yeah. When you give, I give you a gift. I don't mm. control how you use it. You can yeah. use it whatever time you want to use yeah. it, right? Yeah. Whether you would use it for your own benefit, whether mm. you use it to save other people, mm. it's it's your choice, yeah. right? It's possible to sleep with someone somewhere and then and go and prophesy. Aye, man. Because it's a gift. Yeah, sometimes I don't even and think it's the a gift. Part to my mind. That, I think it's calculated most. The second part mm. that has. God and that got me so confused is the stuff that happens. Not everything we hear comes from God. Most of these things they come from WhatsApp, Facebook information, whatever information, whatever you share. Yeah. Because if I search for your name and say McDonald's John somewhere, and then I'll get the detail. Something that maybe you posted ten oh, years ago. I, I I have a story, right? I mm-hmm. have a story. You you can you can have all your details because of social media. You yeah. have your details elsewhere. Yeah. And it's easy for me to tell you. The way I was talking to you, mm-hmm. say, I, I know you talk about mental health issues. Uh-huh. If I was a prophet here, yeah, I'd be like, okay, I protest you. I know you have a gift. You have a hand that will take you for it. You have reminded me my I first prophecy that. that I got in church. Yeah. Um, so I sent him a text like yeah. the previous night and said, yeah. okay, look, um, I applied for some universities. So I'm praying, I'm praying for financial breakthrough. Yeah. You know, so I attached my name. And then the next day he calls me and says, your name is Protasi. And I'm like, that was the first and the last prophecy I ever got from, 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 yeah, that was the first. And then your name is Protasio, you know, but then I was broken. I was broke. You were looking So I didn't have a choice. You were like, yes, this is me. Yes, it's Protasio. And then you say, you've been praying for the salvation of your family. Uh I'm like, I I don't think I'm, that's true. I I don't think I've been praying for the salvation (laughs) of my family. They are crazy, you know. Yes. But because now he's a big guy and the whole, whole is packed. Come on, it's, it's, it's a huge entertainment. You need to comply. You know, yes, 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 papa. You know, and then he says, okay, you want to go to China? I'm like, I already said that message. That was I've message. seen the message last you know, night. That, that, was, that was a message I sent. And then you want to go to China. It's your heart desire. I'm like, yes, yes, yes. You know, yeah, I'm going to do everything for you. We should meet tomorrow. <sighs> so when the whole plan crashed, I didn't blame God. Because I knew uh... stuff were not right from the beginning. Ah, uh, yeah. Come on, that was a red you know? flag, man. So for me, as a young person, yeah. I hear someone that say, okay, looking at a person that says he represents God, and then all I hear is this weird stuff. I'm not going to stay in the church. No, you can't. You can't. Some of us, hey, if it's much, I'm going to go to I've seen that with girls, like, would you be asking now, okay, why are girls leaving the church? Yeah. Because there are so many um, girls that have been asked out by the same people. You know, I've heard about that man. There are guys that their girlfriends. Heard about that. There are guys that their girlfriends have been asked out by the same people. Eee. You know, so when you look at all those issues, you're like, mm. this is the reason why a lot of people are leaving. You know, man, uh, this is crazy, man. And the church uh, and all these stories, it 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 makes so many people. And I think that's uh, I'm thinking about the the mass exodus mm-hmm. of people leaving the church. It's because of how 
uh, entertainment has come through. Mm-hmm. How it's not about the passion of people. No. It's not about the ministry of Isaiah no. where they take care of uh, not the, almost rather the the elderly and the, the and the, the widow uh, mm-hmm. and stuff. It's not about that. It's about um, people, specific people who have privileges to see the amount of money that is coming in the account mm-hmm. getting more richer and richer yeah. while other people suffer. Uh, I don't get it and I don't get it and I always say this, mm-hmm. I don't get it to see that people we hear stories of uh, when the churches are making these big mansions when the mission of the church is liberation. Uh, the, the, the funny thing now they, they also have the bodies to tell you they, the courage to tell you, I say, sow a seed so that God should bless you. Uh, with the leader <laughs> that you're remaining with and then they have all these <laughs> Verses they use I say, to. It doesn't have ever sold a seed tied like, uh, because. There's not take. So, good. <laughs> In fact, the church then the bagasa double seed and tandise so we would have suffering go before us of face. I know. I I know if that, if that pastor is gonna look at that, he's gonna be like, fan out, Jared. But yeah, I can say it. I have ever sold a seed that time. I said, with the struggles that I had, mm-hmm. I sold a seed. Thinking good as the papa, but my foot anga, my foot anga na yajan, my foot anga na do school, school anga mm-hmm. take. Yeah. And no, never worked. The person who helped me, a uh, shout out to Lady Court Trump. She gave me an opportunity to do mm-hmm. a survey again, a guy yeah. which helped me to finish my school. But I have made people who made promises, and I, what you're saying is true of the realities. And I'm saying this. If people would come out today, mm-hmm. I'm saying you're welcome to this podcast. Uh, if you want to have a conversation of the betrayals of what happened to you, this is where you come. Yeah. Because I feel like we need to have these conversations to warn people that uh, are having a lot of expectations mm-hmm. and later on are going to lose everything. You survived. Other people can kill themselves. If you I, receive I, a message, I, I know you got of, to, <laughs> I know a lot of people today that I I mean some passed on. Yeah. Um some committed suicide. Some they 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 made it sound as if they ran mad and then committed suicide. Well, oh. And then you look at all that stuff and you're like, okay, how did I get to this? But if we have to say Gunenagodi, let's I mean, I, am I the only person that is going through that? No, are you the only person? No. There are a lot of people. So out many, there. So, many, so people. many, but they don't have someone that can stand for them and say, okay, I believe you. And the thing is, and the thing is, and this is the thing around around the prophetic ministries, uh, these apostolic ministries, is they have these foot soldiers, mm-hmm. these uh, keyboard warriors, mm-hmm. who even if a name just comes out, mm-hmm. they will fight. Yeah. And they'll fight you. They will describe you in whatever format mm-hmm. and they want to deal with you. Yeah. But the reality of the matter is these things are evidence-based. You know, at the end of the day, now it's your experience. It's your story. I've also noticed that um, Mm. I don't know whether I should use this example, but you know, coming here today to speak boldly like this, this is my first time speaking boldly like this about this short story. Wow! In a in a place like this, yeah. But I'm excited. You here, and this is the free space, and that's why people love this podcast. Yeah, they want to hear authentic stories. Like I texted the lady that I was talking to that Mm. time when I was going through that 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 phase, Mm. Mm. and say, do you know if I died that time? They would have said I was running mad. Mm, the punishment of God. You know, the I curse was, has, has worked. The, the curse has worked. Hey, for me, let me tell you, I say, I don't understand. Mm-hmm. If a Christianity, you can use Christianity to curse someone and kill that person. I don't understand where grace is. There's a pastor a while ago. So my mom was going to, to a different church than I was. So yeah. I was going to Assemblies of God. Mm-hmm. I chose, I'm going to go to Assemblies of God. And this pastor said, my mom was like, oh, my, my, my kid is not, uh, he's not coming to church with me, blah, 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 blah. So yeah. talk to him. He called me and told me, I'm like, dude, I, we make decisions. I have been going to school because I was going to school and my church was, 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 was the, uh, of God was better for yeah. me. Mm-hmm. And I think I was aligning to Assemblies of God. So I wanted to go to Assemblies of God. Yeah. This guy said to me, uh, what you're doing, people die because of that. <laughs> uh, I don't, I'm not saying that you're going to die, but what you're doing, and can even cause you to die oh my because God. because what you're doing is rebellious uh, to the instructions that men of God are giving. Oh I'm telling God. you that day I was traveling, I was going to Zomba from Luande. Uh, how was that journey? We, we, we could have had an accident. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, that guy could have. 
if, if that guy, imagine that, that thing happened. Messi was that a Later on, he go pa 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 so kano na agi. I go You know the power of our word is men of testimony. God. Is I spoke to some guy, and this guy was was not understanding that this was the message from God, and he proceeded, and he died. I don't see. And people, can you ask? Died? Eh? You spoke? Yes. He died? Eh? Ah? Uh, then you had the bad person. Because the grace of God would allow the person to live on. What does the Bible say? I say forgive them. But what ah, I, man. I, 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 I love how they change verses. I know uh, there is a prophet that usually says, you know, um, uh, okay, you touch me by mistake, you die by collection. Jesus wasn't <laughs> saying that. You know, the Bible and says, the, 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 Bible, the, Bible, the Bible even said, the mm. Bereans cross-checked whatever that Paul was saying. Yeah. But Paul never said, touch not God's anointing. Mm-mm. No. David was rebuked, but mm. he never said, Nathan, you are touching the Lord's anointed. He knew that he was anointed, but he wasn't saying, you know, touch not the Lord's anointed. No. And I hear them say, you know, the Bible only says, pray for your enemies. It doesn't say how you, what you should pray about, I mean, what you should pray for. And I'm like, which Bible do you read? <sighs> because Man. the Bible even tells you, he brings the line both of the evil and the good. And the good. And then you're coming in, you're saying, okay, whoever that doesn't agree with us, we should kill them. If God was behaving, I, like, God is not an assassin and, killer. And, and, no, and, and I've, I've heard, I've heard. I, I was even watching. I'm not going to mention this because I know the guy. <laughs> but anyway, I have heard. And I've been praying, 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 praying. So they're like, ah, but witches uh, are coming to your house, right? Mm-hmm. And they're doing. So I want to tell you one thing. Uh, what do you want me to do? Should I uh, cancel uh, what is happening? Or oh, the wish should die. How mm-hmm. ah, the wish should die. Good. Dude, the, the person who you're calling the wish is a person. Now, now even coming it, to that, do you know, okay. He's sinning. What, what, <laughs> what we usually call attacks most of the times is just laziness. Uh, you know, uh, you, you're not praying or you're sleeping around. If they rebuke you, say it's an attack. They're attacking an anointed man of God. No, they're not attacking an anointed man of God. They're rebuking you for your behavior. But I say, you know? people should not kill People, God don't, does don't, not kill people. Come on, that is it. God does you, not kill people. You, you, no, you're not gonna kill a witch. Okay, you believe that that witch or some guy is bewitching someone. But okay, question: How many witches have died? Plus, this person is a person. They are sinning a witchcraft uh, sin in that context. How you put it? Uh-huh. How many people are doing the other sins? Mm-hmm. Why are you not killing the other people? You're going to kill everyone around because you end up assassinating people. And, and, or you, you are stealing, kill, die, die. It, it's sad how... Zojitika kwa singanga. Muntu ya kapita kwa singanga, kwa ni wakuta pe muntu. Tima nena kutu muntu hamene ndo uri ndo wa satana. Wa satana. Kwa mawina kwa ima baguwa baja. Hey. Anene kutu ya kwa matipi ya kutu hakuta. Uyu wa mtu mamurungu. What's the difference? What's the difference? It's all magic is all... The Bible says ah, Jesus gosh. came that we might have life, life and have life in abundance. Dude, I've heard people, man, accusing people of witchcraft. I've been a victim a while ago. I know what happens. I know that the church is very porous mm-hmm. when it comes to um, how they manage things like this. Mm-hmm. You, you have reminded me a verse that I love. I say obedience is greater than sacrifice. Obedience <laughs> is greater than sacrifice. There are certain things people do if they only obeyed God, they couldn't have sacrificed whatever that they sacrificed. You know, they made a by issue, yeah. issues to do with money, issues to do with uh, whatever that they give our church. Mm. You know, other than the day, all God wants is their, a heart of obedience. A heart of obedience is what God is looking for. And I think if you read there, the Bible... There are people that mm. they can sleep around. Mm. They make money. Mm. They will go give Papa money on Sunday mm, mm. and they will feel like God has forgiven them their sins. And they will get a prophecy. And they will get a prophecy. About and, and it's sad how... And they can't... Why that person can't even recall what happened we last say, week? We, we call it microscop- microscopic prophecy or forensic prophecy yeah. because yeah. someone is, you know, telling you the color of your underwear, what is what is it that you're keeping in your fridge. Yeah. How is that even a prophecy? How is that even going to benefit me? But they will not talk about your sinful lifestyle. Because it, I've always waited uh, to hear of a prophecy where someone will rise and say, okay, last last week you, you stole did. this money. Mm-hmm. Uh, last week you took this money and it was 2000 mm-hmm. You took it from A, B, C, D. Yeah. Uh, we'll repent and we'll give you that money. You'll pay back. That's how God is going to correct you. I've never heard the prophecy. The prophecy that are microscopic, forensic, uh, forensic FBI hated prophecies are always talking about I mean, either food that you eat. Telling someone about the, the color of the underwear. The, how is it going to help them? 
And high chances you're gonna guess that. That's just a manipulative, a manipulative way of. I mean, like if you want to manipulate them, brainwash them. I mean, tell them something, something, some. I I see some professors and you're like, oh, so hey, I see you in your fridge. Yes, in your fridge there is, you know, oil. Dude, everybody <laughs> can do that. Everybody can guess what is in the fridge. Like oh, in your fridge, I see margarine. Like seriously, so, oh, 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 oh. And then you go home. You know, I received a prophecy from Papa today. What was the prophecy? Uh, he taught me the color of my underwear. Okay. What does it do? Nothing about your sinful lifestyle. Nothing um, about whatever that you do behind the And that's why door. sin is going, de- is going deeper. It's going crazy these days. Yeah. While men of God who are celebrated are also being celebrated more and more. And the question is, why, why do people that are even there... But my father and I got my car good in my yard, which put in my yard, good in my my eyes, meaning I mean, what my father good there impregnating guys there. And you ask yourself, why don't you reprimand this? Why don't you say about this? Mm-hmm. How don't you uh, call them off for the, 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 the service? Because mm-hmm. of this and repent and go through this counseling or whatever. Because these people, either they know or they don't know. They do the same. What if they do the same thing? Like father, <laughs> like sons. <laughs> Honestly, I, I had I people. I, 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 had, I had people in my heart. Like yeah. okay, I would say okay. Um, I think I'm gonna stay for mm. a while because mm. of so and so. Mm. Because those ones, yeah, they look as if they are walking in the right path. Mm. They know being a cancer, right? Mm. You get exposed to so many stuff. Mm. You hear a lot of stuff, mm. you know. And then somebody comes and says, "Oh, you know that wise man." Yes, that one. Oh, we did A, B, C, D. Oh, you know that that <coughs> apostle. Yes, we did A, B, C, D. And you're like, oh, so they, it explains it. Why they don't have that energy or to rebuke their big man? Because they, they are all doing the same thing. Because they do crazy stuff. Man, uh, I know some of my evidence uh, can be based, can betray other people in terms of, because of how I've accessed some information. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I'm going to leave it there. But all I'm saying is, there are so many people who have been betrayed who have been uh, abused, yeah. who have gone through so much mm-hmm. in the church and they're silent about it. Mm-hmm. They are passing through so many things. There are women who have met men of God who have abused them and they didn't tell their husbands. Yeah. There are men who have given the money they are supposed to invest Ta- in Talking house. about women and yeah. husbands, yeah. there is one thing that I've noticed. You know, there are so many marriages that, especially in the prophetic circles, that are not yeah. working, mm. not because... Um, <clears throat> Maybe they're not praying a lot or yeah. whatever, but because of certain things that maybe the wife is doing with the, 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 the spiritual father. I know issues like those where the, the wife is sleeping with a spiritual father and then stuff just stop working. Because, you know, when those guys are sleeping with you, they're not just doing it in the physical. You know, it's deeper than the, the, the physical pressure mm. that they get. It's spiritual. Mm. There are stuff that, you know, the, the, the occultic stuff that happens, you know, like mm. the, the, the spirits that gets transferred there. All these dirty things that get transferred. You hey. go innocently asking for help. They sleep with you. You wonder why stuff has just stopped working. Yeah. It is crazy, man, how a woman who has a husband is in the same church, goes to the man of God, mm-hmm. I want this. And how that man of God, allow, how that husband also allows their w- w- wife to go and meet the man of God on their own. I'm the prince of my house. Tell me. Come on. If you we, don't tell we, me. We, we are in a generation where it is easy to trust a gynecologist with your wife it's than to trust a prophet with your wife. You, you can leave a gynecologist to meet your wife, whether it's the whole day. You can, you can meet her. But you can't even trust a prophet with your, say, even your girlfriend. They say, okay, maybe this is just a girlfriend. Maybe they'll behave. You hear weird stuff. I, I, I've been there. I was in a relationship by my ex. It, yeah. it was a four days relationship. What? Four days. Yeah. She got a prophecy to say, okay, that guy say they told her, I say, I'm a Satanist. I... And I'm like, okay, let me ask you a few questions. Yeah. Talking about killing people, what do I tell you? You tell me not to be killing people. Mm. Talk about forgiveness, what do I tell you? Yeah. You tell me to be forgiving people. How am I a Satanist? The person that is telling you that I'm a Satanist yeah. is the one that tells you that, you know, if someone is against you, it doesn't matter whether it's your father, pray against them. They should die. That, between me and that person, Eesh. who is a Satanist? Eesh, you know, stuff, stuff like that. And I'm like, you know, you don't Eesh. see the big picture. It's not me that they, they are looking for. They are looking for you so yeah. that they should use you. And then at the end of the day, you come and say, oh, I never knew. 
But you knew what you were doing. For me, I always say this. Men of God, women of God, however you crown them, pastor, apostle, Mm -hmm. and so forth. These people are people. They are human beings. Like all of us. They sin just like everyone. People sin, people repent. Mm -hmm. People have, when you have a conviction to repent, it means that something is working inside of you. Mm -hmm. But some of these guys, they have mastered the art of sinning continuously. I I tell people, yes, you know how when people that are defending their spiritual fathers, they usually say stuff like, oh, we all all have weaknesses. But there is a thin line between having a weakness and being wicked. (laughs) Because most people, they are not struggling with weaknesses anymore. Ah, I love this podcast, man. (laughs) They they have become wicked. You know, if you do something, let's say you slept with somebody's wife today. Yeah. yeah, you'll be forgiven. Mm. But if you do it the next day, okay, mm. you'll be forgiven. Mm. But if you do it 10 times, that is not a weakness. Now mm. that has become your lifestyle. If that's your lifestyle. You're a wicked person and you take advantage of who, of who that you have for that day where you say, oh God, because you do it over you know, and over again. So there are a lot of people that we look at them and say, oh, well, everybody has a weakness. But no, they are not weak. They are wicked. We, 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 we don't, don't even put, don't sugarcoat it. It's not weakness, mm. you know? And then I, I would forgive a person for doing it three times, but not you hear there is, she, he has impregnated someone that side. He has impregnated somebody that side. He has impregnated somebody that side. When they want to come out in public and say, oh no, how much do you want? Pay out someone. Like seriously, guys. And then to people that are watching this, that usually get money mm. or they are silenced with money. Mm. For how long are you going to be silenced? And, and you're going to live with and that. And you don't enjoy that money, you know. You don't, no matter how much money you're given, you don't enjoy it at all. Even if they I give you 10 million. Yeah. I met guys, I've met guys before that they say, you know, I mean, it's hey, 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 hey. But it's crazy, man. It's crazy how in the church, uh, in the ministries, things are happening. They are crazy stuff. Mm-hmm. And we are here watching. And I'm telling you, when young people who are now free-minded, because there was a time when you don't have these conversations. Mm-hmm. Now people are having these conversations. Mm-hmm. The social media, you are seeing so many things. Young people are saying, we can't do this. This is mm-hmm. this is going to take us back. Mm-hmm. Let us have uh, the qualities of being a human being. Let's yeah. have Ubuntu yeah. and leave. And that's what is happening. And it's a danger to Christianity. It's a danger to every yeah. religion mm-hmm. because of how we have allowed most of these things to happen. Yeah. My my position around this um, is always the same. People need to tell their stories. Tell your story about the abuse. At, tell your story about all this that you've experienced. Every time I see um, my our brother, Pempelon Pande, yeah. sharing stories. Yeah. And I know there are people that say, oh, they are made of stories. You know, but to me that has experienced a lot. And I know a lot that is happening around behind closed doors. I'm like, I'm looking for a day where even people will start sharing their Issues that and, they experienced, yeah, the stuff and, that experienced and, and, and in churches, do, and do names as well, and the stuff that experienced in churches, because that's uh, yeah. the, the, most of those stories they are only focusing on the relationship stuff. But and, what about and, and church stuff? And here, mm-hmm. focus with Magnoni. We're gonna have these stories yeah. because I'm telling you, people are coming. Mm-hmm. I have people who are coming to tell to tell their stories about church, mm-hmm. about the abuse, about their lies, about things. We need to have a conversation about them, and I know. I'm not sure how my pastor is going to look at this, but I know that by telling these stories, we are we are trying our best to contribute to the sanity. Yeah, in the church. In the church, yeah. because we don't have to live in a life that is so fake every time where we praise people, but we know that stuff is happening and it's crazy We stuff. see a lot of people drinking. We see a lot of people and we go like, oh, I'm not going to go. Mm-hmm. We don't hear out their stories. And mm-hmm. I avoid just judging a person. You need to hear the stories, I, man. Hear what they have gone through. You know, like for me, I, I, there was a time where I, would even, I was even tempted. I said, maybe let me just start drinking. Those are people that drink. Well, there is nothing wrong with that. Now, for a person like me, that a lot of people look you. up to. I've heard you. Yeah, you have heard me. Yeah, I've heard you. For a person like me, <laughs> yeah, that a lot of people look up to, to yeah. get to that point. Now, in Chichewa, they say, What about Chichewa? Now, I'm thinking, people that went through this stuff, yeah. how do they? Yeah. How are they handling the, their pain? Mm. How are they handling How are they dealing threats? with their pain? Because some of them, they have gone in the streets. Some of them, they're doing crazy stuff because mm. they have seen so much worse. Because if you say you're representing God, mm. you hear God every second. Mm. And then you come and sleep with me and dump me. Mm. 
<laughs> and then you know, it's a lot of questions. Yeah, there's a lot of questions, man. There's a lot of questions, man. Let's, let's maybe in the end, let's, let's finish it on money, man. Um, mm-hmm. uh, Africans were poor. We should be honest. Most Africans are poor. Yeah. Uh, most of the people that are getting rich are people that are coming from different world mm-hmm. places. Yeah. And they come with good models. In Malawi, mm-hmm. we're poor. Um, because of the obvious reasons. We have politics to blame. We have ourselves to blame. Yeah. And we have the church to blame. And mm-hmm. I put I put this without fear to say that the church, to an extent, uh, specifically the modern church, yeah. has contributed to some... Uh, poor decisions of people yeah. because of how people every time it is about developing a church's agenda yeah. and not themselves and not their relatives we have good communities within churches but we have bad communities within families and even relatives and to another and I am banner because of church but but the kuchalishi ali magura mena mapita every Saturday, mm-hmm. so they contribute more to the church than they would do pashibale pao to mm-hmm. grow people. So pashibale pao mana wanti mana wanti mana wanti wa akuso afizi. But the kuchalishi as a group they are putting money together and they are paying for someone. I have said this in private, and this is my first time saying it. Mm-hmm. The church has contributed to one of the craziest setup mm-hmm. of people as specific or Africans. How would you look at church and money and how people that are poor continue being poor in most scenarios while they are very faithful people in church? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So they are continuing, continuing to be poor yet they are faithful people in church. Very faithful. How do you expect a man yeah. to live a productive life when whatever that he, um, he works from Monday to Sunday or Monday to Saturday. And then mm. let's say he gets paid on Saturday. He gets paid on Saturday on Sunday. Papa is demanding um, seed for what, what? Dieth. There is also whatever they call battle seed. They say, if, you know, you had a bad dream. Yes, uh, you need a battle seed. You know, those are battles, spiritual battles. <laughs> you know? And then you give all that money. Said. You go back home. You're depending on God. You're waiting on God to do something, to give you something. But you had money. But you had money. And then at the end of the day, you say, oh, God is not blessing me. You know, God, God, I'm poor. Can you see my faithfulness? I know. But did you sow into the right soil? It's like, it's like, uh, uh, you have money mm-hmm. and you have rentals and you don't pay rentals. You, you give go- the whole man to church. Can I waiting upon God? Come on, this and you go. You're like, ah, dude, you have money. You take money. There are people also like that. They, they take their whole salary. They give a church every month. They give a church. And, then and they, I'm giving they, they, all my, my salary for the whole year. I'm like, dude, but why are you begging us? And then <laughs> the sad part is that the, the, the motive behind the giving, because yeah. they're not giving because they love giving. They're mm. giving because someone has taught them and said, if you give 1,000, you yeah. get 2,000. Or if you give 100,000, yeah. you get 200,000. Yeah, it's like, it's like, he, it's like, uh, as if God is a vending machine or something. I've uh, heard, uh, it's like, <laughs> I remember there was a day where somebody said, um, so someone was like, oh, you know, like, yeah. um, church people don't bet. Then they're like, why do you give seeds? It's a bet. It's a bet. Because you say, okay, I'm giving this because I'm expecting You expect this. something. You know, but God doesn't work that way. In churches, there are people that are lacking school fears. Mm-hmm. That are whatever, whatever. But people would not, would not say, Today, Magosana, ten to pay again, would you win a son of a Fizimuna? A kind of fees. But what does the Bible say? The Ere Church, they were sharing whatever that, that they had. Culture, they man. Were that was a culture, man. That was a culture. You know? But today, they can't share in church because in church, there is no camera. They need to call Times guys. They need to call Zodiac guys. They need to call whoever yeah. so that they should see these ones. They but give the a lot. But the crazy thing is, there are people there. I'm not so a A lot of them. There are people there that are sleeping hungry. I'll be transported a, a, a lot of them. I made a window. But you are taking it and you're going out there for the sake of the PR. And before I forget, as, as we were, as we were concluding, the, yeah. the other part that touches me most is most churches are promoting a spirit of laziness. Yeah. What do you do? Uh, I'm a prayer warrior. Okay, it's good to pray. <laughs> it's good to pray. I'm a you know, they go warrior. to church, shout, I receive, I receive, I receive. Yeah. They go home, fold their hands, sit, waiting God for God to bless them. Yeah, How because, is God going to bless because, you? Because there are these, these, these miracles that have been coined, like the miracle, uh, the way the miracle money is coined, mm-hmm. the way the miracle, uh, 
I think it's just miracle money, a miracle jobs and whatever. I never applied for it. Then I just got a call. You applied and you have a job. I never, uh, uh, I wasn't expecting any money. Mm-hmm. And then I just received money like 20, 2 million mm-hmm. for money. And I don't know number. I don't even know what happened. People think that is going to happen. And that creates laziness, man. A lot. A lot, mm-hmm. a lot of people are lazy people today. They're, 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 they're struggling because of believing stuff like that. Yeah. You go to church from morning to evening. I receive Sunday, Monday, you're back for another service. You will rest Tuesday. Wednesday, they are calling you for another service. Thursday, yeah. they are telling you midweek service. Friday, they are telling you an overnight. How are you going to be a productive citizen if I you spend was- all your days in church but i've always argued against that i'm like okay we need to have an arrangement we need to be to be productive if you go in the countries where people are productive they don't do that you know africa is, is the sad part is That's why africa, in africa, is africa so poor. We, we pray a lot we have a lot of prayer warriors than any other continent prayer warriors who the, don't work we are the poorest ash man you talk of nigeria now even it's easy nowadays, nowadays even if you don't have anything to do you just visit a certain you hear oh apitaku congo or apitaku nigeria yeah. they come back oh God has spoken to me. I need to open a ministry there. But it's it's a business. Now. It's a business. Because and how to be rich. Mm-hmm. Their business is to get you to in law in that mm-hmm. course and make money. Not the content. No. And the same thing with the church scam. Because then for me, I look at the scam. If you look at the 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 pawns, the scam, the mm-hmm. area ones, and all the scams that are gone, and the church scams that have been there, mm-hmm. you see what happens here is a lot of scam. The scam man. So this scam will take you as well from that point A, right? Yeah. To give you the faith, but that money, hey, this is gonna work. It's but at the end work. of the day, no, it's You're not gonna work. work. Because and, and, and for ch- you to make money, uh-huh. for you to make money, you just have to do the same. And the challenge is, you are left alone. You start calling them. They don't pick up. Hey, man. When they need money, they'll call for physical money. When you need money, we'll pray for you. It's sad. Hey, I'll just pray for you, man. I it don't have well. anything. It is well. It, it is, is well. well. It is well. Don't worry. Guys, you, if you can organize money for an, a simple arrangement, good guys, hey, uh, we have something happening. Uh, we need to have this event. Okay, mm-hmm. we need we need 10 million. Uh, I'll give one. I'll give three. What if, if a brother or a sister is in need? Can't you do the same? They don't. Because I feel like the church has departed and it's all about the agenda of promoting some specific people. There are some churches that this, are doing good. This is why you have some... Okay, yes, yeah, so there are churches that are doing good. Yeah. This is why you also have a lot of churches today that... Um, they're still lending buildings, you know, mm. they're still praying and lending, you know, they're, <laughs> they, they, they haven't be. built their own, you know, for years. I know a lot that they, 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 they haven't built their own. You tend to ask, this person says he's a millionaire. Yeah. She says she's a billionaire. Mm. She says, he says this and that. Mm. How come they're still... They can't afford to, 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 to do a church, to, to build construct their own. Church. Their own yeah. No. And people don't want to ask those questions. And, the, and people don't want to ask. <laughs> You see the cars that they are driving, the yeah. Porsche cars that they have, and you tend to ask. Two them, cars can build, a, can build a church. Even one. You one. can. You can f- but then when it comes to building, they'll be calling poor people somewhere. Yeah. Yet they're the same people that front around and say, okay, we are the richest. We are this and that. But when it comes to building, or they comes, yeah, it comes with a listen by a tent, mm. they'll be calling out poor people. You know, The money that they have worked hard for. Ish, man. You know. then I have a crazy theory about giving uh, and all that because of what I've seen I'm in my life. And I know uh, uh, my wife is going to look at that and be like, yeah, I know, I know, because <laughs> uh, I've seen things. I've seen things. I've seen how people can manipulate you. Mm-hmm. Making money is difficult, man. Yeah. Let's be honest. Mm-hmm. Making money is difficult. Mm-hmm. Money doesn't just come in a phone. Yeah. Money, you work for it. Mm-hmm. You get paid. And you, most of the time in Malawi, you don't get paid directly. No. You pay it slowly. Mm-hmm. And for you even to afford anything that you can afford to pay for your... It takes time. It takes time. Mm-hmm. So for that to be lost and to be given to someone like that, man. Ash, man. That's crazy, man. But yeah, dude, <laughs> thanks for coming, protest. Yeah, I say, ah, we can talk for days uh, about these things, but I'm so happy that you came. Yeah. Why am I so happy? There are so many reasons, but I'll point out one. People need to own their stories. Yeah. Malawi... Um, and African societies are built on secrecy, mm-hmm. uh, corruption, abuse, and all those evil things that we call, they thrive in in, in quietness. Yeah. They thrive in that, those kind of spaces. If we come out and just talk about these things, we make it a habit of telling our stories. That's when things will start 
uh, backfire because people will now know when they're experiencing this. They say, oh, I've heard about this. And I, I'm, I'm actually, um, I want to start, um, I've started writing a book behind closed doors. Amazing. So I'm going to talk out about the stuff that happens behind closed doors. Yes. Every other Looking night. forward to that book. I'm going to behind closed doors coming soon. Soon. Yeah. And then after that, I want to come up with a series. Mm. Um, not really bringing in the, the, the victims, but I'm yeah. just creating yeah. their stories and letting people know this is yeah. what is happening yeah. in different places. Man, build that, man. We need it to own our stories. Because there are a lot of people that are hurting. There are a lot of people that are mad at God because yet it was not even God. It was just the it person that some they were following. Who, you know, because who it's misrepresented easy. God, you know, stuff like that. It's and, easy to manipulate a person using the name of God. It's easy, I'm telling you. I can manipulate people by just promising them it's going to be God and this is God. This is everything. And it's easy to get away with it. Yeah, it's, it's very easy. Man, uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> let me ask you a final question. Uh, finally, uh, I know you do, a, or do, you do a lot. There's mm-hmm. a book that you're talking about. What else are you working on apart from the um, the Street Kids thing? Uh, okay, so there is a book. There is a, uh, the Street Kids thing. That mm-hmm. one has been, that, that has been taking my time a lot because mm-hmm. uh, our plan is to make sure that we get all the kids off the streets, like all kids that we see in town. So yeah. we started with Blunt Tire and then mm. we are coming for to Lilongo. I'm doing mm. it with my sister. Mm. Uh, she's the executive director of the organization. Mm, mm, so mm. our plan is to make sure that we don't see kids anymore in the streets. In the streets so that, yeah. that has been demanding because you wake up in the morning, you have to go to police. Someone mm. has been, a guy's been yeah, arrested, yeah, stuff like so that. So many things. Yeah. And the other thing that I want to do uh, as as uh, soon before the year ends is I want to start... Uh, something bigger for guys that are in prison. I want to come up with something bigger say, for guys that I are say, in prison. I say, I think about the guys who are there. Um, say, it's, it's cool. Is that the, you're thinking the, like the, that? The, the plan is to come up with ways, you know, how we can help them and also yeah. help their families outside. Yeah. Because most of them, you know, when they get arrested, their families struggle a lot. Yeah. Um, and I'm glad there is a, there is my sister. I call her my sister, Marita's sister. I don't know. Maybe you've heard about her to Saiwe. She's from mm. Zuzu. She mm. volunteered to be Yay. adopting the younger ones. She, she's a great woman. She she's volunteered a great woman. To be, I want to meet her for a podcast. She volunteered. I think I should go to Nzuzu sometime. She volunteered to be meeting, I mean, to be supporting the babies. Yay. So I said, okay, my side, I think I want to be supporting the ones that are in secondary school, Yay. the ones that are going to college. Mm. So when these guys are coming out of prison, they shouldn't have... I mean, they shouldn't be struggling. They shouldn't start struggling with depression because of whatever that they because find Because they found that there's nothing was there. So, plus they... Put their families at risk. Yeah, that's yeah. that's that's that. Uh, otherwise, I think those are the major stuff things that I've been working on this year. Cool. Uh, so you you the movement that you have of rescuing street kids. Yeah. Um. How do people? How can people come in and support? Well, okay. Um. We we just started because. Biomir was just um, all of meeting them, feeding them. Oh, yeah. But then we, we sat down and said, okay, feeding them is not enough. No, it's more like we be, are feeding thugs. Yeah, you have to be you strategic know? about it. We yeah. have to come up with ways that we're going to help them uh, to get off streets and then also to live as responsible citizens. Yeah. yeah. So there is a lot that happens because we, we, we meet their families. We mm. see what is it that pushed them to the streets. And then yeah. we have to solve that as well. We have yeah. to help the family as well. So it's the, the other part that... Um, we are working on the, the part that we're working on right now is to find houses at safe homes mm. because the safe homes that are there right now, the safe homes that I know in Blanta, most mm. of them, when you send kids there, they run away. Mm. So I'm trying to come up with, I mean, to find houses that I can use as safe homes. Yeah. And then uh, for those that need to go to school, we can send them to school. For those that need vocational training, mm. they should be trained. So that's you just say. Do they you know that's where be, development is? I say. Yeah. We, I mean, if we can't help those guys, we will be struggling with a lot of crime issues in the country. Yeah, it starts with helping those little ones. It starts ones, with you know? helping them, giving them an option, making them feel that I can do this and after this I can get something. So for now, own. like for every every weekend, like today mm. I was supposed to meet them in the morning. Every weekend mm. we meet about like 100 kids, somewhere what? 80. We don't even go call them. They follow us. Like I say, wow. those kids need help. They, they need know help. That they need they help. know you that know? we need to go Once somewhere. you show them that you care, mm. you don't need to search for them. Mm. They, they, they find you. So what now the, the bigger plan now is to find safe homes. Um, and then for boys, for girls, for teen mothers, because they also, we, we have also been rescuing uh, girls that went into marriage 
uh, mm. before the the legal age. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Like I remember last week we had to get one. I mean we we, we saved one. Mm. She was 16. She got married mm. forcefully of course because yeah. of whatever that her yeah. stepfather died so we had to go get her. But now after getting her where are we going to keep them? That's the thing. Because we can't just also leave yeah, her. Yeah, you, you can't know? leave her. So I'm trying to find houses so we can also be keeping the teen mothers uh, until they find. Do a website, have those uh, ideas mm-hmm. in one place, uh, push that thing, man. Yeah. Because for me, I feel like that's where development is, that's where transformation is. You have mm-hmm. been in, you come from the streets, you understand what happens there. Yeah. Um, if you would get uh, that strategic, um, there's a program on Trans World, I think they say, uh and Sharkwood. Mm-hmm. There is a I think there's a there's a, a center in the US yeah. uh where they uh receive people, they give them shelter, they give them food or whatever. The dream center. Yeah. I, I've always wanted and that, 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 like was, that, that was what good idea. That I uh, okay, I read a book about the guy that mm. that gave me to that, that that energy to say, okay, mm. I think I can do this. Because they call it the church that never sleeps, like it yes, opens the 27. Church that never sleep, the 24 church that never sleeps. The church that never sleeps. Yeah. Yes, 24 it's a good 7. Mission, and then I, man. I, I looked at it and said, okay, this is what I have. I've I've been willing to, I've, I've been having that heart, yeah. you know, to do the same thing. Yeah. To have a place where if someone gets chased at night, where can they go? Where can they go? I remember in my the the previous church where I left because yeah. I was uh, the, the chairman for prison ministry. I, I was the, the, wow. the head for prison ministry. The, the sad thing that we, I, I mean, something that used to crush my heart a lot was to see a person, I'm going to say three o'clock in the evening. Mm. He comes at church and then the people at church tell him and say, you can't sleep here. E- you can't stay here. So we we'll get phone calls from police and say, you know. So I look at stuff like that and say, if the church does not even want to accommodate people like us, who is going to accommodate them? Who is going to help them? So I said, okay. The um, other part, when, I'm, uh, when I was talking about safe homes and then in yeah. prison, I want to have a place where those guys also can say, okay, if we don't, if they don't have anywhere to go, mm. come over. They can come over. Uh, you have proper security. You have everything. Proper security. Yeah. Is there, if they need training, special trainings, we'll yes. train them, you know, stuff like that. And then when they know you that I can leave my own, them, I can do yeah, it on my own. You can help them really to integrate in the community beta. Yeah. Um, oh my God, man. I'm so happy. And I'm saying, get a website, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, have those ideas there. The meetings that you are doing. Uh, document those those kind of stories. People need to hear those. I'm, yeah. I'm passionate about specifically street kids. Yeah. Um, I've never been on the streets, but I know a, a play, sometimes when you are all alone mm-hmm. without help, without anything. Yeah. There are dark days that you can have in life, mm-hmm. and you really need somewhere where you can go. And church is not a place where you can go at night. They're gonna chase you. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> they will take you as a thief. As a thief. And they're going to even beat you up. The, the security can beat you up. Churches are not built like that. Mm-hmm. So we need to find places where people can feel safe uh, in a way that they will be they will be received with God's love. They will have a conversation with someone who understands and a counselor yeah. who understands. Mm-hmm. But also it is designed with, to understand people mm-hmm. that are coming from that kind of abusive place. Yeah. So last thing, man. How do you want people to remember your ass? I mean, you're doing so many things, but also I know you're going to do a lot. But how do you want people to remember your ass in life? <sighs> your legacy? How do you want to be crafted? One man, one wise man taught me, he said, the best legacy you should ever leave is not the legacy for people. Yeah. It's the legacy in people. Mm. Legacy for people is the buildings that you might leave for them. The buildings that you they say, oh, that's his building. That that used to be his building. You yeah. Know? But the legacy in people is, I'm alive today because of that person. Mm. I have be, I believe God today because of that person. Yeah. You know, I'm strong today because of that person. I almost gave up, but that person believed in me. Mm. I want people to remember me as that person that they could run to at every at every hour, mm. no matter what they were going through. That mm. person that was there for them in spite of whatever that they were dealing with, mm. you know? I want to be that person that when people look at me and they say, that guy was hope. When mm. you look at you, you, you meet him, mm. you'd find hope. Even when you have lost hope, you'd yeah. still find hope. And mm. I want to be that person that they would look to and say, he was our father, he was our friend, he was our brother. Mm. He was that person that was everything we needed him to be. Mm. But when it comes to how also I live my life, I don't live my life chasing after net worth. I live my life chasing after life worth. Mm. How do I live with people? Mm. Not what have I left for people? Yeah. Yeah. 
Crazy man. I, I say you you you're an inspiration, and I I hope people now through this podcast it's gonna be heavy, uh, for people to understand some things, but they will know, mm. uh, what kind of person you are and what you're building. And I'm so excited, uh, coming from suicidal thoughts, uh, being in the streets, yeah, to now thinking about helping people. Yeah, this is what we need to do, and these are the stories that we need to talk about. Man, I'm so happy that you came. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope next time we'll have another podcast with you to discuss more about everything that is happening, sure. the progress. I believe things are going to happen with you, man. Yeah. It's not a prophecy. <laughs> <laughs> I receive it. Uh, but I believe things are going to happen because I've followed you and I know that you are, you're doing so much and uh, congrats to what you're doing. I know the best, man. This Thank you, episode, obviously, is going to get some backlash, but this is what we're built for. We tell our stories and yeah, whoever comes for it, the better just to address the, the matter, not the person. Because yeah. you don't hate any person, you love every person. I mean, if we hated them, we could have been all over. Yeah, you, know, you don't have to hate stuff, them. But no. You need to love everyone, but you need to call out people when uh-huh. they have done raw and you have evidence and it happens to you, it's your story, you need to own your story. Yeah. So yeah, guys, like, subscribe. Uh, this is where you get the stories. This is where you get us to talk about so many things. Uh, and I'm so happy that you guys were there. Uh, until next time just make sure you stick around invite people make it a happy that this is going to be your space uh, for all stories Malawi Africa globally we're talking about stuff and this is a podcast for that until next time uh, my name is McDonald Protasio Protasio see you on the next one see you